Well, hello everyone, and welcome to our overdying of leaf print experiments on silk. I thought it would be really fun to see if we could get some color changes from Saxon Blue and a bunch of other colors if we overdyed with them when they're known good overdyers. So this is the first portion of this little experiment. We're going to be dipping these into Saxon Blue and at the same time we'll be making some Saxon Blue leaf prints to uh, dye with cochineal in another part of this experiment. So this is our beautiful uh, silk and we have one silk charmeuse in here to color change and we'll see how they do in this big giant pot of Saxon Blue dye. I've already tested it to make sure that it's not too dark. I used a couple little scraps here of silk so I know it's not going to be able to get darker than that on the super greedy fabrics. So hopefully it won't get too dark of a purple. <laughs> I might throw a couple pieces of fabric in to exhaust the dye bath a little bit first but here's the first of our over dyeing onto printed fabrics. My attempts to exhaust the dye bath have failed. I threw in several more pieces of silk that I found that I had just uh, mordanted in alum triformate, hoping that it would uh, exhaust the dye bath a bit more. It did not. It did not. The dye bath is still very strong. So uh, pray for our little prints that they don't just turn black purple. <laughs> okay, I'm filming the moment I put this in because I'm, <laughs> I'm scared and I want you to be here for me when I do this. Goodbye. I hope you turn green and purple, not black. Okay, we're going to monitor it very closely and pull it out the moment that we like how it looks. Okay, nothing too crazy is happening so far. Okay, we might have more time than we did than these than we did with the uh, with the um, the whole wool thing. That was an incident. Okay, bye. I'm going to watch him very closely, and I will pull him out when he's ready. Okay, the other one was like a five second Easter egg situation. I'm pulling it out. Saxon Blue, you're crazy. This looks so good, but I, the, 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 oh God, this happens too fast. Alrighty, so after laundering and finishing up the bath on these, we got some really interesting results. Where the cochineal is in, it will not be dyed by that Saxon Blue. It is not interested in taking uh, an over dye unless maybe I soaked it longer. Um, it changed the yellow less than I thought it would. I thought it would turn it more green, to be honest. This side, we got some deep greens, and I'm loving it. But that was our first ever try at doing something that was multiply dyed. So now we have an Easter egg, rosy maple moths. But we will uh, hang these up to dry and revisit after we have finished all of our uh, little over dyeing experiments on prints. In the midst of our over dyeing experiments, uh, I just finished making our uh, Saxon Blue prints to over dye with uh, cochineal, but I also have a couple of these that I have put back in to over dye them in their own dye blanket and see if I can fill in any of the gabbage and also get some color change on the fabric. So that is just an additional portion of this little experiment. We're gonna over dye in Saxon Blue what already got dye blanketed in Saxon Blue and uh, use that as a, a tiny portion of our over dye experiment. If I had remembered to do that with the cochineal, that would have been smart, but I didn't, and here we are. Okay, our little over dyeing experiment that we did unexpectedly. Oh my gosh, what is happening to the color on this thing? The, the green and blue is freaking it out. Oh my god, what's going on here? Well, the camera's totally freaked out color-wise, but you can tell that there is a major difference in the depth of color and the greenness compared to the control, which is this one. Big difference. Even though the, the, poor, <laughs> the poor camera can't tell. It's trying. Anyway, so there is another little over dyeing experiment where it actually just went right back into its own dye bath. And that was a little impromptu too, but I didn't want to miss the chance. Uh, if I have a chance when we do cochineal over dyeing, I will make a whole nother cochineal to be over dyed into itself again uh, and see what we get. But anyway, we'll let these dry and review everybody from the over dyeing all at once. After drying this, I'm noticing that 
uh, the wool and when you do yarn fibers in the Saxon blue, it really does not shed it once it's dyed. It does not shed a bunch of dye. I'm noticing that into the silk noir especially, this stuff sheds like crazy and most of the color washed out of this last night. So I decided to heat up the Saxon blue again that I had left over and re-dual dye this to make it come out a little more rich. And I think it definitely did. We definitely got more purple than pink this time. But it is really amazing how much color falls out of this silk noir. I rinsed it and rinsed it and rinsed it and rinsed it and it just kept shedding color. So anyway, highly recommend a heavy, heavy laundering of this stuff when you're done. But I wanted this to get a little darker so it's been in here for a good 10 minutes. Uh, I also think the dye bath was pretty exhausted from making blankets with it. So either way, uh, doing well and coming out a nice purple and green, just like we had hoped. Okay, we are getting ready for our second over dyeing of silk leaf prints. I've got cochineal heating up here. I'm gonna turn it down a little. Cochineal is not a heat sensitive dye, but we don't wanna boil the bejesus out of our silks. Uh, so we will put in a few of these to over dye them. I also have a previous cochineal print uh, that was made with a dye blanket that we're going to put back in to see if we can get it to color change itself in its own dye bath. So we're going to do that. I will show you them once they are in. Okay, so we have our pieces of blue and yellow silk in. I thought they would definitely turn more purple. The cochineal really, really overrides uh, light Saxon blue. It goes right past it and turns everything pink. So the other over dyeing direction seems to let it retain more purple. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, this is turning very pink and that's okay. We're just learning. All right, I will see you when these are out. Okay, continuing our over dyeing on top of leaf prints. I have one blanket dyed cochineal and fire flame tree and one blanket dyed Saxon blue with the same. And I'm going to put them into a goldenrod dye bath, which is yellow, which should do something to these colors. Keep in mind, I've washed these in between and just re-wetted them. So they're not necessarily re-mordanted or anything. Uh, but silk will take up a lot of natural dyes all on its own. So I'm just going to give it some time in there because this dye bath will not be exhausted. Okay, I wanted to review our over dyeing of leaf prints. So these are our controls. These are the fire or flame tree, whatever it's called. Still, still have not surmised the exact name of that tree. Uh, this one had a Saxon blue dye blanket. This one had a cochineal dye blanket, obviously. And we thought it would be fun to take those in multiple forms and dunk them into other stuff. So this is cochineal over the Saxon blue meaning this looked like this to start with. And so this is what it looks like now. So we got, sorry for any weird sounds, my washer makes a lot of uh, weird noises. So the cochineal over the blue gave us these kind of strange oranges in the yellow, which is sort of predictable, uh, but otherwise not that predictable. Um, the cochineal seems to be the most powerful, and if you put it on last, it will absolutely dominate. That was the cochineal over Saxon blue. Now Saxon blue over cochineal made proper purple. And look how beautiful it came out. Look at this awesome green, and we got a cool kind of shadow of cochineal where it was deeper in color. And it's gorgeous, and these turn green. So coach, the Saxon Blue needs to be last. That is very clear. Uh, I have a couple more samples to show you of ones that I did uh, in the midst of everything else and just hacking up pieces of our experiments. Ones were goldenrod over cochineal and Saxon Blue. So the goldenrod over cochineal made some beautiful oranges, and it just yellowed up the yellows. It didn't do too much to the yellow, but it really peached that up compared to the other. And then the goldenrod completely blew out the 
the uh, Saxon blue. The goldenrod was way more powerful than the Saxon blue and just obliterated it. And then another thing I did was I tried over dyeing them with themselves. So I took, for instance, the cochineal and dunked it right back in to the cochineal once I had finished leaf printing it. So these went much more orange and the cochineal obviously went much more pink because it was being redipped. Beautiful. And then the same kind of idea for the Saxon blue, which I think might be my favorite thing so far, because look at how beautiful that came out. It turned the blues more blue, the yellow to a lovely green. And I just think that one is super cool. And then the last thing I tried was over dyeing some of the fancy silks. So let me show you those. So this one, same as, and you can see my little leafies, same as the Saxon blue dye blanket put right back into Saxon. But this is on beautiful Habotai silk from Anidi Designs. Gorgeous. And I just redunked that. Now, I took a very big, and you saw it in the video, uh, another video where I was doing leaf prints. I took a big silk charmeuse. And this was literally blue and green when I put it into the cochineal bath. And it turned into this. It's beautiful. It's shiny. You could still see the leaf prints like very clearly in some places. It got like beautiful markings. It's gorgeous. It obliterated any of that Saxon blue. Just ate it. I remain fascinated, impressed, and amused. Uh, and my collection of silks grows ever larger. The last one I have was a cochineal dye blanket like this, this one that I dunked in the Saxon blue and this might be the best thing I've made so far. Look at that. Oh my God, this terrifying sound of draining dishwater. I took the one that looked like a moth, the rosy maple moth, and I dunked this guy back into Saxon blue. So what we have learned here is Saxon blue needs to be your very last item, lest it disappear. It needs to be the last one, for sure. If you do that, you will get beautiful things such as this. Thank you so much for coming to another experiment. I would like to thank all of my patrons, especially those at the upper levels that keep me fed and alive. I hope you will consider coming to Stitch, Die, or just hang out with us over in our Facebook group or on my Patreon. I look forward to meeting you there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!